Well, shortly we'll be talking with award-winning classical singing sensation Solomio. Now, though, are you a saver or a spender? Now, your attitude towards money is likely to have been established at a very young age. Maybe you've taken on your parents' bad habits. Uh oh. So how and when do we teach our kids healthy finance habits? We are talking about that on the Coffee Group today with parenting advisor John Cowan and personal finance author Amanda Morrell who wrote Money Matters. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Let's start with you Amanda. When should we be talking to our children about money? What sort of age should we bring it up? It starts very early before you can e even have the conversation really because kids are modeling their parents. So I think that's something parents need to bear in mind. You know they're like little monkeys. They are observing, they're watching. So those early habits are formed at a very, very young age. Uh-oh, I'm just yeah. thinking of a few spending habits that I may or may not have that yeah. may or may not be good for my children. Uh, John, most families have pocket money. They start pocket money quite young. What, what is a good system that works? Our system was that children uh, got half their age in pocket money. Now, that's a few years ago. That was each week. And uh, they had to do certain chores each week or they wouldn't get their pocket money. But we didn't give them the idea that chores earned wages because you have to do chores just because you do chores right so, but there was that linkage that if you didn't do your chores you didn't get your pocket money and there were extra chores they could do for extra money okay so they're not actually earning their pocket money by like saying if you, if you empty the dishwasher you're getting a dollar mm. because that's not healthy for them uh, well what happens when they get their jo first job up at the dairy you know and they're earning twenty dollars a week up there no I don't really want to take the washing you know, I don't take the rubbish up uh, I don't need the money this you know week. I don't need the money and because uh, no if okay. they consider it just wages then they've got that power. Fair enough. Um, Amanda, how much control do you think parents should have over how they spend their pocket money? Uh, over the selections? I, I, I'm kind of fairly laissez-faire with that. The children kind of make their own decisions, but what's more important to me is, I agree with John, they are expected to do a lot of chores around my house. So yeah. it's, it's run pretty efficiently. But if they're incentivized, you know, because they're saving for something extra, they are going to ask me and they're going to work a little bit harder for it. And that teaches them really good work ethic and it establishes an important relationship right. earlier on with money, a healthy relationship with money. That is, you don't get it for free week on week. Right. You know, you, you're, you, you're encouraged to work for it and then you're going to value not only um, the things, the objects that you buy with it, but you're going to appreciate the relationship you have with money. You are, and you do appreciate more. what you've got more when you save for it yourself. Exactly, yeah. uh, John, is it okay to dock pay for or dock pocket money for them if they haven't done things? Delay payment, I think, is probably better. Hey, we've got to hold this up until I can see that bedroom looking spotless. And so rather than just docking it, just delay it. Works out much better, I think. OK, yeah, yeah fair enough. And um, I think we also need to be the bank of mum and dad sometimes too and just hold on to it. Just have it I have it written down yeah. so they know what they've got, but it's all uh, it's not just lying around their room getting lost. Another good banking thing is to incentivise saving. And the system we had that worked actually really well was we would subsidise their saving towards a big project that we approved of a dollar for dollar after they saved the first 35. Now that might sound an incredible amount of subsidy, but if you think about a $100 thing they want to buy, it means you end up paying about um, yeah. you know, $35 towards something that you probably would have paid all, all that's, the money for if they hadn't been saving. 100% correct. Yeah. Um, Amanda, what about kids' KiwiSaver? Should we be contributing to that? Uh, it's a personal choice for parents, yeah. but personally I think I'm, I'm quite in favour for it for the reasons mm -hmm. about you get the contribution when the kids are over the age of 18, mm -hmm. you know, the government's going to give you an extra $500 mm -hmm. for free. But what you got to think about long term with your kids, I know they're really cute and they're babies, but they grow up, you know, really they quickly. Do. <laughs> and look at the prices of houses. So if you want to do your kid a favor, $20 a week from the time that they're born, by the time they're 30, they'll end up with over $100,000 for a house deposit. Okay, that's good. And then they can pay for themselves to get through university as well. <laughs> yeah. That's some really good well, advice. Well, they can't there. use Kiwi Saver for university, uh, but, you know, uh. a house of retirement's <laughs> a bonus. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you so much for coming in and have a wonderful Christmas.